Yeah, be phenomenal or be for God. They fall like dominoes, soft as cod. Mad I lost, sick I'm toxic. I know I got it. Ready, I'm ready. Come test my ride. Welcome back to the OG YouTube. Okay. We have kicked off our next prep. So, uh, officially, welcome to the Season A 2023 IFBB Pro League Pro Qualifier Mike Lucy Prep. Um, currently, 11 ish weeks out, the first show in. Four weeks after that, 15 weeks out of the pro qualifier. Um, gonna do what we do best. Gonna hopefully come back, right the wrongs, and, uh, and take what we're working towards. So, um, at the moment, sit this far out. We had originally planned to do a um, show in March, the Arnold Amateur over in Ohio. But after that got cancelled and then um, uncancelled, we thought it best and more fitting to get the job done on home soil. So here we are, ahead of schedule. But as we know, 11 and 15 weeks comes fucking quick. So um, we're really pumped to dig into this prep. Um, I feel like I've been digging in already for the past sort of five weeks and. Everything's moved along really, really fast. It's funny, each prep that I do, I just find that my body responds as soon as we sort of head into any sort of deficit or dieting phase, the body just responds. So, with me, as always, fine line between <clears throat> fullness, condition, flatness, depletion, and, um, I gotta find that, that nice balance. So lucky with Dean in my corner, he's done a couple of preps now. I was really, really happy with my look the last show. I think we've improved on that. This show, the focus and aim through the growth phase was always to improve proportions, symmetry. So give the illusion of a smaller waist, wider shoulders, bigger arms. And I think we've done it. Um, happy with how the body's looking. I've never had this shaped or this look um, to my physique. So yeah, I think we've got another sort of 11 weeks, 15 weeks to improve. Um, it's exciting. So as always with my morning routine, so we get up, I've got a client at 5 a.m. I get some steps done, I do a cold bath, ice bath, um, four times a week. They have infrared sauna before that two times a week. I'll cook first meal and then we'll train early and then um, get about the rest of our day. So I like to sort of get up early, I'm an early riser. I like to be active early. I come in here and do the treadmill for the kids on mind busy. And um, like I said, I sort of find myself my most creative and um, when I get locked into that routine, everything just starts to flow. So if everyone is different, for me, it's getting shit done early, that sets me up for the rest of my day. So today, we'll show you a bit about that morning routine, some, some of my ice bath, my cooking, eating, the beetroot pasta, the red chip meal, famous meal, and then we'll train some legs. Hard, raw, real, that's how we do. So uh, stick around guys, and um, should be some fun.
So for those out there, the gut right daily. So I find that a lot of people are familiar with the old gut right, which was like a um, it was like a sort of a seven day or a ten day sort of course, um, and it was a lot, I suppose, more concentrated or full on. So you, you do the old gut right for like you know fourteen days is like a um, it's like a cleanse, and you go into like a maintenance cycle with it. A lot of people found that the taste was really really strong, which it was, and unbearable. With the gut right daily, it's one that you can use daily, so it's not as strong as the previous version of the, of the gut right or the original, which is still avail available for those that have or develop severe digestion issues or stomach issues. But the gut right daily is going to obviously you know help you with all the prebiotic and modbiotic fibers, and just supporting you know, intestinal bacteria balance, digestive processes, um, all those good things. Comes in chocolate flavor as well, and I mix it with about 700 mils of water. Um, and I do that one daily, so gut right daily. Um, my digestion has never been as good as it is right now, um, and my waist has never been as, as tight as it is right now. So definitely get onto that one. Well, five days, <laughs> which I haven't. So guys, school holidays right now. More. And this angel Iman, <laughs> my firstborn, she's been getting up every morning, 4 a.m., 4:30, and coming to work, making shakes, making coffees. Hanging stuff up, been doing an amazing job. So, big shout out to Iman, my baby. Oh, she's not a baby anymore, look how tall she is. She's fucking almost taller than me. But um, she's done an amazing job, yeah? Peace. Famous red pasta. So it's funny how much of a creature of habit I am. Each bag of these is 600. So on my low days, I get 200 grams of pasta for the first meal. So I know that a bag lasts me three meals. On the high days though, it's 220. So what I do is I do 200 of one bag, so that bag stays even. And another bag, I do 20 grams each time it's a high day. So at the moment my, my top up is from Penne, but my main is spiral, so I have Penne and spiral. Um, but OCD. Hey Iman. Yeah. Can you please rub me up some rice? Rice. A bag of raw rice, yeah. Okay. Love you guys. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Did you need me for something like? No. Oh. Being a bodybuilder, business owner, husband, father, all the above means you need to be efficient. So we cook multiple things at once, so things are ready, because preparation is key. I find that even from coaching people, when things aren't prepped and ready, that's when people you know, take the easy option, which might be, you know, eating off plan or eating out or any of that shit. So rather than, or well, the best way to avoid that is to set yourself up to succeed. And that's like I said, by being prepared and having everything essentially ready to go.
So just sort of like reasons why on your ice bath. One, make me feel good, make me feel hardcore. And two, better recovery benefits in terms of like anti-inflammation of joints, tendons, ligaments, muscle recovery. Um, promotes a lot of blood flow. What you find is that when you have yourself in cold exposure, your blood will travel to the, the organs to protect them. Stomach, heart, all the lungs, all those things. Then when you come back out and try to get warm again, obviously your blood flushes back to your limbs, trying to warm those parts of the body up back to what we want to be, 36, 37 degrees. So it just promotes extreme blood flow, um, which again is really good for recovery. A lot of benefits in terms of norepinephrine um, activation as well, which sort of is in control of like dopamine, serotonin, all these feel good hormones. Um, so there's a whole array of benefits. You burn three, four, five hundred, six hundred calories for those three, four, five minutes that you're in the ice bath just for the body trying to stay warm. Um, so a lot of benefits. Studies suggest that. Um, 11 to 12 minutes per week of cold exposure um, from the shoulders down is ideal. Um, that's not just in one session, it can be broken up. So I like to do sort of three or four sessions, four sessions of about four to five minutes. So yes, a bit more as well, but I like to be on the higher side. Um, I like to do it faster. I wouldn't do this after training, because while you're training, you you sort of you um, accrue information and create that information response which helps you grow. You need the information. So if you go and train, create a bunch of information and then jump in the ice bath and reduce or squash that information, it almost defeats the purposes of training in terms of hypertrophy and muscle growth. So I do it away from training or before training. So my ideal scenario is get in the morning, do my steps, my cardio, um, and then do sauna and ice bath, then eat, do the body rest, and then train. That's how I feel the best. I also believe that while my blood sugars are lower in the morning, my blood sugars in the morning are around 4.7 to 4.8. So there's less sugars in the blood, which means that when my body's trying to stay warm, it's uh, burning fat. A lot of studies also show that cold exposure activates ground fat or ground um, adipose tissue, which when released helps to burn more of the white fat cells. So a lot of research behind again, you know, fat loss in stubborn areas of fat loss um, from cold exposure. So check it out, don't take my word for it, try it out. Um, like I said, I feel great just from the very limited amount that I do. I do mix this up also with cryotherapy, which is like the, the um, ice chambers. It's a good feel. as the ice bath is, it's warming up, <laughs> it's actually the fox bath. Organic Turkish apricots. <laughs> the secret. to be at the bottom so I get a little bit of a fruity surprise <laughs> with everything else going. Fuck what we get. 
But it just comes from eating the same food so frequently. You've got to just, simple things that change. Makes all the difference. Actually, it's so funny the way I even want to eat done as well. Service. Sort of guys with my morning routine at the moment. Like I said, I get in, get the climb done, get the steps done, get the ice bath, and then I eat. Um, and the way my macros are set up at the moment with my highs and lows, my morning meal never really changes. My pre workout meal is always the same. And that's important for me because it means I go into that session, whatever session is, feeling the same, if that makes sense. If I was to have a high day and a low day where my pre-workout meal was significantly lower in cows on my low days than it was on the high days, then that would, I believe, have a significant effect on the session. So I set it up so that my pre-workout meal is the same pretty much regardless. Uh, it might vary in 25 grams of apricots, which it does, but it's next to nothing. So going into my session, my, the feeling's always the same. It's really, really important for me it means I approach each session with the same sort of mindset and freshness. Um, so, at the moment, my high days are around sort of 300 protein, about 1,000 carbs and 80 grams of fats. And my low days are 320 protein, 600 carbs and 60 fats. Um, that's pretty much the lowest I reckon my calories will get because I drop scale weight and respond daily to that many locales so much so that I've had to throw in more refeeds full weeks on high cows just to try and stop that um, fat loss being you still have you know really 15 weeks until the main pro qualifier so um, the ultimate good position to be in um, I am hungry and um, it's a weird, weird thing to feel after six months of 8,000 plus cows, um, feeling hungry, like it feels good, but also feels a bit weird. Um, I eat, let that digest, do some online work, do some checking for some clients for one team, shout out to one team, um, you know, do all the weekly check ins there, look at their photos, go through the results, make changes um, as they need to make sure they stay on track as well. And when I'm done there, after about an hour, I haven't got a client, that's when I start warming up and start my training. So I like to eat, a bit of digest, and then train. So we'll see you back in an hour when we are training legs. So graceful at this one. Actually, that was quite graceful. That was his best effort, getting, yeah. getting out is not graceful. Shot there. 
thing about getting into shape early, yeah, you start to feel depleted and shit early. Last night I was walking around, I heard my heels were hurting on the ground. I think that after seeing the disappointment of condition in season A, season B last year, you really um, instilled something inside of me to, not to show them, but to really bring it. And I suppose show them what condition it is. Show you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, if you're going to get a cup of tea, you can blue. Yeah, we could do blue or pink. Pink would be cool. Ooh. That's cute. And oh. um, what about Rodman? Rodman always had sick hairdos. Dennis Rodman hair, what comes up? <laughs> That's it. That's the one. <laughs> Done. Thank <laughs> you. 
Josh, quick spot. Just 10 to 15, a couple of 40 at the end. Notice that like I started this block of training on 20 kilo dumbbells for my lunges, 10 out of 10 back, and I'll end this block on 20 kilo dumbbell lunges. The reason why is I'm only trying to progress the extension. This isn't always will remain for this block a pre exhaust for the extension. If I also increase this weight, it will become the predominant. Uh, movement of this superset on the leg extension to be so it stays the same. Tell me what to do. <laughs> All right, so moving on to our banded leg press. We're using the arsenal leg press here. Yes. 
I like the Arsenal leg press because it's the smoothest leg press I've ever used. The angle hits exactly right. It's got this with the pad here. It sort of comes down and kicks inwards. I find it takes all lower back pressure out of the movement. So I highly rate the Arsenal leg press. Come on, come on. Up. Twelve. Let's go. Three up. more. Up. Up. Come on. Come on. With you. Let's go. I'm with you. Let's go. Come on. Up. 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 Good boy. Fun. I got you. Let's go. Come on. One more, you got one more, let's go, you got one more. Up, push, 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 come on. Good. Up, push, I got you, let's go, come on, push it. Good. Two more. Up. Keep going. Let's go. Up. I'm with you. Come on. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up. Good boy. Just like one. You know where it's time to swap out next size when, like, in your dread coming to it, you lose connection and feel to it. Yeah. Or you stop progressing, slash, start regressing. I must still love this exercise. Still got a great pump from it. But I find that the, the regression in my performance was same weight, less reps, is, um, means it's time to swap it out. So refresh it up, change the movement slightly. Not leg press maybe, just not this one. And um, you start low obviously, we get some progression. So, 
and then put it back in, start a little bit lower than this, and then move over. Yeah, yeah, so after 12 plateau. weeks, 24 weeks, yeah. whatever, yeah. you swap it back in. Yeah. And then your new baseline will start from a light yeah, position. Yeah, different position or whatever type of thing as well. Yeah. So, it's, um, it's just you've got to be in tune with, you know, not getting attached to an exercise too much. Yeah. How's the energy feeling? Huh? Energy? Sapped. <laughs> yeah, it's just fucked. A couple of big, you know, massive um, mass sets. Let's keep this one. Cool. Come on, bro. Stay there. Yours. Go. Yours, do yours again. Yeah. Straight down, straight down, straight down. Press. Good. Good, one more yeah. round. Don't fake it, come on. Everybody, get up! Get up! Give me one more! Yeah. One more! Power! Everything! Yeah. Nice! Yeah. Who's the best daddy in the world? <laughs> Say hi to Baba. Oh, hey Nene's guys. there too. Hi, Nene. Hi. Do you guys want to be on Baba's YouTube? Yeah, look. Say hi. Hi. Say like and subscribe to my dad's channel. Like and subscribe to my dad's channel. Please, <laughs> please, please. Please, please, please. <laughs> Finished up on the multi flex, mm -hmm. split squats. It's just a fucking torturous time and attention set yeah. exercise. Yeah. Um, finished up with some seated leg curls on the prime. I like to set the prime up so it's slightly harder at the top than at the bottom. So when I'm strongest, the resistance is the greatest. And when I'm contracting, I can get a full squeeze as I fail. <laughs> You're out of the wheel, Jordy. What did you say? You're out of the wheel. <laughs> Three, four, 
Is very stunning. If you go down low, low, though. Any angle. So, fam, that is legs at 11 weeks out, done. Uh, quad focus today. So we did our warm up with carbs first, not on camera, upstairs. Then we did um, our standard warm ups, doctors, good kickbacks, into a standing unilateral leg curl for the hamstring, put blood in the hams, and then we moved on to a Super set of dumbbell walking lunges into the prime leg extension. Three sets. Then we moved on to banded arsenal leg press. Three sets, last two rest pause. Then the multi flex split squat, 20 each side, three sets. Then we finished with the prime seated leg curl. So. Uh, primarily quad focused, huge pump, which is great. Got a couple of high days because my weight dropped so fast, I came into condition so fast. I've never looked like this at 11, 15 weeks out, um, which is a blessing in disguise because my body thinks that it's probably three weeks out right now. It's how it feels anyway from previous preps. So all those normal feelings with beans that are you know, three, four weeks out come as well. Fatigue, you know, wanting to see the scales go down, wanting to get more and more conditioned. But then the other part of it is that I can't fall into the hole because when you carry as much weight and as I do, when you get too far into the hole, it just takes too much to, to fill you back out. Drugs and food, and you risk low digestion, etc., etc. And a prep is progressive. So a prep, we progressively get better into a peak. We don't peak and stay there. We progress into the peak. So for me, it's about uh, trust the plan, listening to Dean, shout out to Dean from Flex Success. Um, listening to Dean, following the plan, balancing the line now between condition, depletion and flatness and fullness. Staying as full as possible while still progressing my condition and um, getting better and better. So that's where we're at. Shrinks down, but intensity's high. With those few high carb days, pump was crazy. Um, and that's how we do it, guys. Real raw, no staging, there's nothing put on here. How you see us run this session is how we run every session. Um, nothing is put on for the camera, nothing is manufactured or, you know, um, imagined just for today. This is as real as it gets. So, the first of this prep series. Um, in between now and when we post this, we'll think of a name for the series and we'll call it that. Um, we'll bring plenty more to you guys as well. Got some cool announcements to do with ATP, sponsoring season A again for IFBB coming up as well. So by the time this is released, we'll have those out. And um, 
and you know, really looking forward to another huge season for bodybuilding, supporting the Federation, supporting the league. Shout out to Tony Doherty and the IFBB Pro League Australia uh, for doing their best to, to keep us athletes performing, competing and doing what we love and putting on the best Federation in Australia because it really is. So put a comment down below for anything you want to see more of this prep. You know, whether it be more posing, more food, um, you know, more behind the scenes sort of stuff as well. Obviously, we're going to be doing a lot of training regardless. But anything else that you want to see, let us know. Um, and we'll definitely try and bring you more of that. I do want to do more posing and more behind the scenes stuff anyway. So we'll make an effort there with Corey to get up early and sort of bring you that process. And um, yeah, man, we'll do our thing and uh, we'll keep on keeping on. So till next time, OG fam, one team, one dream, one gym. Never give up. Hard work pays off. We all we got. We out. T. We out. We out. Billy. <laughs>